In the world of television and cinema, there are stories of incredible friendships that are forged on set. Think uh, the matching tatted cast of Lord of the Rings and tales of off-screen heat that made filming unbearable. Here's looking at whatever was going on with Sex and the City. But as the art form has advanced and budgets have increased, it's become less of a necessity to have everyone hang around. Some cast members get the work done without meeting their castmates at all. Army of the Dead is one of the hottest films on streaming platforms right now. A gritty yet fun zombie free-for-all perfect for tossing back your microwave popcorn. Tig Notaro's deadpan and reckless Marianne is one of the more charming pieces of the film, but did you know that her entire performance was green screen? Hmm? Tig Notaro was recast in the role, but after the pandemic landed, so all of her work was done via green screen with minimal crew, mostly on her own. Director Zack Snyder was with her every step of the way to coach her as she went, and they came up with creative solutions to the CGI conundrum, like putting Notaro's assistant who was over 6'2 in a full body green screen suit so she could eyeball where Dave Batista might be. Army of the Dead has been doing its press largely through digital space, so to this day, she has not met up with any of the cast and has, quote, never met Dave Batista in her life, end quote. I bet you're no stranger to the reputation Jared Leto has garnered as a um, <clears throat> method actor. And I think we'll all agree that the stories coming out of David Ayer's Suicide Squad are some of the most bizarre. Margot Robbie has only ever been good to us, and she did not deserve a sudden onset of rats, dead or alive. And let's not even get into those poor hogs. Will Smith didn't experience any of this artistic chaos, and in fact, Jared was so method that they never actually met. They shared space on set, but per Smith, Leto wouldn't even say hello, warm up, or rehearse with anyone. Quite the method. You would think that the Joker would be down for a laugh, you know, a joke. What is Screen Rant if not Paul Bettany content persevering? Before he won our hearts as Vision and then broke them in this winter's WandaVision, Bettany began as the voice for Tony Stark's AI system Jarvis. The birth of Vision takes place in Age of Ultron, his sixth contribution to the MCU, and was the first time he actually worked with any of his castmates. Prior to that, his work would be done over a few hours in a sound booth. He pulled off a hot decade of never meeting up with the person he was talking to. Who knew that best practice on Tinder would get you paid the big MCU bucks, huh? We're not done with the Marvel Universe just yet. Guardians of the Galaxy has a lot to love, something for the whole family, and everyone found themselves charmed by Groot, and by extension, his much gruffer and communicative friend Rocket the Raccoon. Vin Diesel, who voices the sacrificing tree humanoid, and Bradley Cooper, the man behind the saltiest of nocturnal animals, did the majority of their work in a sound booth, much like Paul Bettany. They only just met backstage doing press on Jimmy Kimmel. I'm just glad Bradley Cooper could catch up with him at all. I am Groot. Man lives his life a quarter mile at a time. You gotta be quick. There's an estranged digital performance in every ensemble these days. For Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice and Justice League, motion capture was there to create the otherworldly images of Steppenwolf, portrayed by Game of Thrones' alumni Kieran Hines. He played Edmure Tully, the Lord of Riverrun. Hines completed his original work in a motion capture studio away from the other cast members the first time around, and did the same for Snyder Cut reshoots. Just like Tig Notaro, Kieran Hines reports that Zack Snyder and the crew were immensely helpful with the process, although no record on whether or not he had any assistance shoved into green suits. Comedic horror ensemble pieces and puppets had a special moment in the 1980s with Beetlejuice, Little Shop of Horrors, and Gremlins. But according to Gremlins star Zach Galligan, Gizmo wasn't part of the ensemble bonding experience. You want some chicken? No? He never heard Gizmo's sweet little voice on set or even met the voice actor Howie Mandel. In an interview earlier this year, he said even 30 years later, the pair have never met. If you missed that revelation, don't worry. It got buried under the controversial statement that Gizmo is cuter than Baby Yoda because he's fuzzier. Bit of a nerf herder, if you ask me. For 2018's Mary, Queen of Scots, director Josie Rourke took an interesting geographical approach to the story of friendship turned to rivalry, a la written correspondence between the titular heir and Elizabeth I. 
Instead of using a studio lot, Margot Robbie's scenes as Elizabeth were filmed in England and Saoirse Ronan's work as Mary on location in Scotland. While the two actresses were tempted to hang out, they didn't see one another to make the one scene they had together, a departure from actual history, more impactful. Yes, I'm cheating a little bit here, but the emotional impact of creating a fictional space where the two women might have met and Saoirse and Margot seeing one another for the first time in costume is too cool not to mention. Behead me about it, still cool. John Wick and Deadwood star Ian McShane sure can say a lot of consecutive words good, and his brief role in the Game of Thrones episode The Broken Man is no exception. Septum Ray, the show's version of the elder brother from the book series, offers a salvation and words of wisdom to Rory McCann's Sander Clegane, also known as The Hound. His one episode arc was filmed in Belfast with only a handful of extras in the mix, so he never met any of the other cast members until it was time to record the DVD commentary for the episode with Marjorie Tyrell herself, Natalie Dormer. All the world's a stage, and uh, I'm sorry, who are you? That's our list. It'll be cool to see how more motion capture technology and advanced green screen work might increase this phenomenon. And hey, the next time your coworker makes you want to shout into the void, you can daydream your way into the glamorous Hollywood career of being unknowable.